Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I want to do a review of No Man's Sky VR. Not a review of No Man's Sky Beyond and not even a review of No Man's Sky the best game but specifically a review of the virtual reality experience that I've spent five and a half hours in since it released on Wednesday in a PSVR headset combined with a PS4 Pro. So let's start off with something basic that I noticed multiple people seem to have trouble with and that is how do you even activate the VR mode in No Man's Sky? Well the game itself doesn't make this very clear but if you want to play No Man's Sky in virtual reality then you need to make sure that you have your PSVR headset turned on before you even booze up the game from your PS4's menu. Also, keep in mind that No Man's Sky supports both DualShock 4 and PlayStation Move controllers, so I recommend having your preferred method selected and ready to go on Booze Up 2. Once you're in, you may notice that No Man's Sky doesn't really make a big deal about the fact that you're in virtual reality. There's no virtual reality specific tutorial for you to go through like there was in something like Resident Evil 7. Instead, you'll see pop-up hints in the bottom right corner of your view which will do their best to explain the new VR elements and controls that have been added to this game. And let's talk about those new controls. I played exclusively with two PlayStation Move controllers as I wanted to see how well Hello Games implemented them into this game and I was not disappointed. Your two Move controllers are presented to you in game as two hands. With these hands you can reach over your shoulder to equip your multi-tool, you can make a fist and punch the flora and fauna you can click through very intuitive holographic menus that flows above your hand. You can raise your hand to your helmet and press a button to activate your scanner. You can wave to other No Man's Sky players and maybe, most importantly, you can grab onto your spaceship's thruster and joystick to soar through the skies and outer space at hyper speeds. Some aspects of these controls did take a little while to get used to. In particular, you'll soon learn that pilots in your ship's joystick is all about gentle wrist movements rather than big movements with your arm. But once it clicks together, you may realize, like I did, that these controls may very well be the best implementation of PlayStation Move controllers in a virtual reality game to date, and Hello Games deserve to be commended for not taking the lazy option and only supporting the DualShock 4 controls, which they very easily could have done, and instead really focusing on making the VR experience as immersive as possible. However, No Man's Sky Virtual Reality is not without its drawbacks. That's because the first thing you're probably going to notice in No Man's Sky on PS4 is just how blurry the world, or rather worlds, look. At anything other than close range, you're going to see a big drop off in image quality. It can appear as though somebody has smudged Vaseline over your headset's lens at times as you squint your eyes to try and see whatever that thing is on top of that hill over there. This may be then was to be expected on a standard PS4, but as I was playing on a Pro, I expected a little bit better and wasn't the only one, as Eurogamer journalist Ian Higton took to Twitter, believing that the blurriness was some kind of bug or issue, and this is because Ian Higton played No Man's Sky in VR on a PS4 at a pre-event, and he claims it was a lot sharper than what we have now. Now this has gone on to fuel speculation that the blurriness may be some kind of bug. Some people are even reporting that turning off online in No Man's Sky helps reduce the blurriness, but that's obviously not going to help you if you want to play with friends. With that said however, neither the blurriness nor the increased pop-up that the VR mode introduce are the end of the world. Yes, at first the lack of visual fidelity was distracting, but once I stood beside my ship and experienced the scale of it, or the scale of one of the ridiculous looking creatures that live on these planets, and once I got a group of pals together to play with, all of a sudden I wasn't really noticing how blurry the game was beyond 20 feet in front of me. All of a sudden I was too busy trying to milk an alien creature to even care about how the grass would only pop up once I hopped out of my ship and was standing in it. All of a sudden my jaw was dropping at the sight of a huge planet in front of me as I flew through space, all of a sudden I was too busy digging tunnels beneath the feet of my teammates, causing them to fall in just in the hopes of making them feel motion sickness, and while I did all these things I wasn't thinking about all the issues that the game had, I was just having lots of fun. But speaking of motion sickness, personally I never get motion sick in any VR game, but if you are the type of person who does get sickness in VR, then be careful when you're in your spaceship and flying your jetpack. I suspect this game will definitely test you. There are some comfort settings however, you can teleport instead of walking or running, 
the option for snap turning is there if smooth turning isn't for you and there is also the classic vignette option which ought to help also. Now are these effective? Are these enough? I can't really say because this isn't a something that affects me. So to wrap things up, thanks to this mode, No Man's Sky has risen to the top of the games I plan on returning to over and over again. And keep in mind, this is a completely free update to a game that launched in 2016. Now when I think of that, I can't help but look at Bethesda who met us by Skyrim VR as if it was a brand new release which wasn't necessarily wrong of them, but it does speak volumes about Hello Games and it's another chapter in the unique redemption story of No Man's Sky itself. So that's it for this review of No Man's Sky VR, but before I end this video, please let me give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now. Thanks to their generosity, they are helping me improve the content I can make on this channel and will continue to improve it in the future. Let me give particular attention to Pete Hawkins and Crum, both of whom have decided to support me on the top tier over at Patreon. Lads, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you want to support me too, then the link will be in the description. But if you don't want to spend your money, then I'd love if you support me the old fashioned way with the likes and the shares and all that usual shite. That's it for this video. Lads and ladies, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.